I've been writing short short articles about um, about science and about physics while I was a grad student, and I realized I really like doing that, and I came up with the idea of a column, and I approached uh, Physics World because you guys had reviewed my book and published an article by me. And I remember, Mateen, you saying to me, well, that's an interesting idea. Why don't you come up with 16 column ideas and we'll think about it? So I sent them to you and I didn't hear from you for months and months and months. And all of a sudden I got a call from you saying, Bob, we want we want three columns by Friday. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I think I wrote two, but in any case, the um, that that's how it started. And by the way, the 16 columns, I think I'm halfway through right now. <laughs> I'm glad you did most of them or half of them. So, yeah, what, what sort of topics have you written about over the years? I mean, I know them quite well. How would you sort of summarize the different types of things you've, you've, you've covered? Well, it's a, whole, it's a whole range of things from textbooks to the physics of fireworks and bread uh, to things about what it's like to be uh, a physicist, uh, graduate school in physics, retirement, uh, beautiful experiments and great equations, leaders and crackpots, trust and humor, things like uh, the physics of tops and kaleidoscopes and rainbows. So it's just, it's a, a tremendous variety of things, which is why I like doing it. And I mean, did, did you ever think when you started out that this would be still going after 20 years? I mean, what, what do you think the secret of <laughs> the success is, if I can uh, say that? Well, I had no idea it would go on for 20 years. A every month, um, I'm not sure how much longer it's going to last. Every month I, I worry about how many more ideas I'll have, but somehow it keeps going on. And I think it's done well because it's always fresh. Every every month I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. And by the way, Mateen, I'm not sure about what I'm going to do about August. Um, <laughs> but but I, th I think it helps that because it's a column, I realize I'm not trying to say the last word on the subject. I'm, I, I, I can't say the last word on a subject that all, all I can do is try to write about an interesting topic that connects with readers. But it means um, that I'm always writing about something that interests me at the moment. So it doesn't feel like an obligation. And of course, from our point of view, you know, we get some physicists will say, well, you know, all I want to read about is hardcore physics. Why, why are you writing about this history and this philosophy? I mean, I mean, I think it's really interesting, but how would, do, do you think you've succeeded in um, making people interested in history and philosophy who wouldn't otherwise be interested? Oh, yes, I hope so. Because what I think it does is point out interesting dimensions, uh, kind of philosophical and historical dimensions of, of physics that physicists themselves don't think about. So I hope it enriches their experience of what it is to do physics. Now, some of the columns you've done over the years, Bob, you've kind of especially invited the community to give give you their thoughts on particular topics. So what, what sort of things do you, do you think you've actually learned from the physics community when you've gone out and asked them for contributions? Well, the thing that impressed me the most is that the community is is more knowledgeable and, and imaginative than, than I am. Uh, some of the feedback columns, um, in some of the feedback columns, I asked for their thoughts on things like beautiful experiments and great equations and uh, bloopers that they've come across and physics jokes, and the, and the, the results were amazing. So uh, what I learned is just how, how imaginative and uh, rich and experienced physicists have. Yeah, because there's always this feeling that um, physics is a very sort of dry and arcane subject. And of course, it's not. And the thing I've learned over the years is just how much it's a human endeavor. And it's it's full of all the foibles and the uh, ups and downs that human characteristics have such a huge role to play in, in the way physics is done that um, it's certainly not the way it's taught or whether the way it's um, you learn the subject, you kind of feel it's this... Uh, uh, very uh, d discipline that doesn't involve those human endeavors. So, I, you know, that's one thing I've learned and I've really appreciated what a human endeavor uh, physics is. But tell me, Bob, over the years, what have been, what have been the sort of favorite articles or assignments that you've, you've worked on for us? Well, I like, I like to write about people, um, aspects of, well, what you just said, I like to write about aspects of science that physicists don't normally think about. I mean, physics, as he said, is very rich practice you don't find, you wouldn't learn that from uh, traditional philosophies of physics or traditional histories of physics. So I'd like to 
uh, I really like to write about interesting subjects that illustrate the the human dimension of physics. So physics of of bread, of of coffee, of of fireworks, um, and I also like to write about interesting people who do interesting things, like that that um, that physicist uh, Frank Sinden, who w- was working on a mock up of a boat that could sail faster than than the wind that was powering it. Um, or the uh, you know Jane Richardson, the woman who uh, the the uh, artist who developed new ways of of depicting proteins that that we now see um, all over the place. So, and I also really love blasting scientists who don't appreciate philosophy, or who mm. think that they can do it better than we can. Yeah, that's been a sort of thread running through quite a few of the articles, hasn't it? And I love to write sort of about punct- that. punctured the egos of quite a few sort of senior people, haven't you? That's right. Um, so who, who are the re- real culprits of thinking they know philosophy of science but don't? I mean, I'm thinking of, would it be fair to say Steven Weinberg is in that category? Steven Weinberg's a little bit in that ca- category, but, but he's an honest person. If you point that out, he will, he will admit it. It's uh, people like Steven Pinker that, that really uh, outrage me. And as you know, I've written, I think, two columns about him. But also there are a few uh, other people like, I don't know, Sean Carroll d- does often. He wrote a whole book about the that talks about the implications of um, physics for for ethics. That's one regular topic of my column. And the other question you you wanted me to ask you about was: um, Do you have any regrets, Bob, or missed opportunities in writing the column over the last two decades? Um, yeah, there were actually a few. One of which was not getting sued. <laughs> uh, <there was> a, <laughs> uh, I don't know if you remember, but there was one. A uh, very difficult column to write. It was about the ambiguities of experiment. Uh, sorry, the ambiguities of discovery, and about how um, some what it is to discover something can uh, is very difficult. It's very difficult to, to date um, to, to put a date on it. And I, um, the one reader got very vehement and said, "No, a uh, discovery date is the publication date, and that's that." And he had a little bit of skin in the game, um, and I uh, I kept insisting, no, it was the a discovery is an ambiguous um, ambiguous thing, and he threatened to sue me, and he even said he was going to threaten he was going to sue me in uh, the UK because the libel laws were um, were uh, uh, a lot easier there for um, it was a lot easier to sue people there. And um, I regret not being, I, and he never did that. And I regret it because I would really have loved to written a column about the trial. <laughs> and um, so that, uh, that's one regret. And another was after nine, I, I remember after 9-11, you asked me um, if, if I could write something about that, if I could write in a column appropriate to that. Mm. And I couldn't, I couldn't. And I then I saw um, that Neil deGrasse Tyson had written a very beautiful article for Natural History, for his column in Natural History, in which he talked about the World Trade Centers and how if you were an amateur scientist, how much you could learn just by observing them in a um, and what was inside them in a um, in a careful way. And, and it was very beautiful, very elegant uh, column. And I, I, I regret I was never able to to figure out how to do that. <laughs> 